Today's a big day. We are headed to the Uyuni Salt Flats, southern part of Bolivia. It should be like, obviously, super cool. Right? Mind blowing. Mind blowing. Stay the night at a salt hotel. Mm -hmm. We're headed to a place that's been described as where heaven meets the earth and to experience the most wild landscape in terms of extremes and elevation that either of us have experienced. I think we just made it on Mars. <laughs> we were picked up from the airport by our awesome tour guide, but before we go on our actual tour, we have to go to the office to check in. After all the paperwork's done, we get taken on a small tour of Uyuni, the town, and kind of see a little bit of insight into how the locals live here. You would think it would be just like any other town. However, with such limited resources, it's kind of amazing that anybody lives here full time. About 20 kilometers outside of Uyuni, on the edge of the salt flat, is a tiny town called Kolchani. Only about 600 people live here, and there may, in fact, be more llamas than humans. Our first stop is the train graveyard. As we get up close to these steel giants, you can see how the salt has slowly started to rust and eat away at these once mighty kings of transport. Okay, we are at the uh, train rail yard. Is that what it's called? Graveyard. Graveyard. Um, yeah. <laughs> there obviously has more people here than ever before. It is swarming with people. It's like the obligatory first stop for all of the tours. I think everybody's like, well, first yeah. stop, train rail yard. But, you know, to be fair though, I mean, cool. the trains were really important to this area. Anyways, we're gonna walk around here for a little bit. Then we're gonna head on into the salt plants. One of the legends that the locals tell is that the salt flat was said to be what was left behind from an enormous lake formed by the tears shed by a heartbroken mountain goddess after her husband left her for, of course, another mountain. All right, we have landed in the middle of the salt flats. It is much like being on the moon. Um, we have had a beautiful lunch prepared for us out in the middle of all of this by Victor and Omar. It was so lovely. Um, this is the quietest place I've ever been. You can literally, like all you hear is maybe a passing car that's pretty far away. And it, you know, and we're wearing jackets and so it's, 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 it's cold, but at the same time it's hot. So you, you, you will definitely want sunscreen, sunglasses, I mean. I mean, without sunglasses, you're just like, <laughs> oh God. I mean, it's bad and, and a hat, yeah, but. But it's incredible. It's just, it's this wild. This place is, yeah. It's, it's nothing you've ever seen before. Inkawasa Island is about 61 acres and can be unreachable during the rainy season. It's the only place in the world where these type of gigantic cactus grow. They are hundreds of years old, and we were told that some were even up to a thousand years old. The panoramic views of the salt flats were absolutely breathtaking, and it really drives home the illusion that's made by the horizon line and how some people could get lost out here for days. At the top of Inkawasa Island. Man, it's stunning. It really is. It's like, it's, it is like you're standing on the top of a mountain in the middle of an ocean, a white ocean. Yeah. If it seems like we are having trouble breathing, we are. The salt flats are at an extreme altitude, making the simplest of tasks seem very laborious. It literally takes your breath away. 
And if it seems like we're having trouble forming sentences, it's because of the beauty of this area. It's overwhelming to be in such an incredible landscape. We struggled to find the words to describe its beauty and how surreal and strange it was at the same time. This is just stuff you can't even imagine. My friend, the skies are bright. I see orange light. I want you to know that I love you so. And I feel like gold. And I love. We're having sunset in the water out here in the salt flats and it is like a perfect mirror it is the craziest thing you can get the coolest pictures luckily we have the best guide who has shown us everywhere to go and take the best pictures i'm blown away by how beautiful this is i mean it's just crazy that we started i mean we woke up like at like 4 30 in the morning in la paz and you know and then we jumped on an airplane and then we came here and we met him and we drove all over the salt flats and learned so much then they hooked us up with this great little wine and olives and everything right here on the on the on this big mirror. It's just been, it's been a crazy awesome day. It is. This is so cool. It's pretty cool. So Our hotel was made entirely of salt, including the hallways, the walls, the ceiling. After being in the wilderness all day, you really appreciate the challenges the hotel must have in order to sustain this type of luxury. To have central heat and electricity past 9 p.m. is actually somewhat rare. We started out our day at the salt factory so we could see how everything was done. They process 25,000 tons of salt here annually, and 90% of that salt is going to be for consumption. The table salt is then sold to the neighboring countries. Everyone there was so nice, and I think the main goal was to show us that before there was tourism in a uni, the co-op had built this industry with their natural resources. And of course, we were able to buy some to take home as souvenirs. From up here, the world seems Our second stop is to see something that Bolivia is very proud of. There are these little areas of warm pools of water bubbling away. They are revealing what is the world's second largest lithium supply living underneath the salt flat. We meant to be in the great outdoors. For lunch, we grabbed a spot near the base of a volcano, where wildlife wanders freely. We were almost guaranteed to see llamas and vicuñas when we were driving around, but we took a bet with Victor that we'd be able to see the somewhat elusive Vishakas, which we affectionately renamed Rabaru, mostly because we could not remember what they were called. And boy, did our guide Victor deliver. He knew exactly where they would be hiding and made sure we would get to spot this unique little cutie. We were also very lucky to be able to see flamingos. We weren't here in the wet season, so spotting them can be rare. There are three different kinds of flamingos that hang out in this part of the salt flats. They are hardy birds to be able to survive here. They pick through the reeds to find algae and insects to eat, and they are amazing to watch in the wild. Sometimes you need to go. 
We spent the rest of the afternoon exploring Coquesa, an ancient village at the base of the Tanupa volcano. It's best known for its ruins and mummies, but we loved walking around this old church and exploring this place that feels so forgotten. Great, we have spent the last two days with Victor from Hidalgo Tours, and we have had so much fun. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really good, and Omar is in the driver. He's over there. He was an excellent driver, too. I can't imagine having this experience without him showing us all the cool things out here, for sure. I mean, the guy is like a genius when it comes to like all those perspective photos. I mean, we were, we were yeah. just out here, you know, doing a couple more, but I mean, they were pretty fun. So, so anyways, thanks, Victor. I really appreciate everything okay. you've done. Yeah. Great. Hey, if you're having fun watching our videos, we'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. Also, if you click on that bell, you'll get a notification as soon as we have a new video posted, and we've got a lot more coming your way. This is the first report that I've ever been in that actually has like space heater in the baggage going near you. So yeah, it is a little cold here, a little above freezing. So there's used cactus on it. Three meters tall. No, like ten meters tall. Thirty oh, feet tall. Thirty. Oh. Yeah. 